Although the JBL 9.1 came out in the first half of 2020, it still offers features that the current 2021 soundbars don't, which may make it the perfect addition to your TV setup. I've installed many of these units for my customers and they rave about the versatility and sound quality. Wait around to the end as I'll share some tips on how to make the most of the soundbar as well as some easy fixes to the issues that I've found. Let's get into it. The JBL 9.1 is a very well balanced soundbar that's packed with a bunch of cool features. You get the main bar which has three forward facing and two upward firing drivers a 10 inch subwoofer that's on the larger side when talking about soundbar systems, and two rear speakers which have one forward and one upward firing driver on each unit. This makes it a 5.1.4 channel system. The most unique feature of the soundbar is that the rear speakers have an internal battery and can last for up to 10 hours. Once you're finished watching a couple movies, you can plug them back into the main unit. This not only charges them up, but also adds to the number of speakers you have at the front, which presents a wider soundstage. The magnets are super strong and easily hold them together, even if they were to be bumped. The magnets are also opposite in polarization, so you can't put the speakers in the wrong way round. When setting these up for my customers, I generally tell them to use the rear speakers when watching movies or playing games, but then have them at the front to watch the news or sports. If you don't want to move them back or forward all the time, then grab a couple of long micro USB cables and leave them plugged in at the back. For those wanting to do this, you can turn the speakers on and off to save battery as well as mute them through the remote. On the rear of the soundbar, the port selection includes an HDMI in, HDMI eARC, Ethernet, optical, USB and a figure 8 socket. There's controls on the top for powering the unit on and off, changing volume and inputs. The front has a nice LED screen which is easy to see from all angles. In the box you have brackets to warm out the soundbar and rear speakers. And if you're thinking of doing this, I've made a video step by step on how to warm out your soundbar which I'll leave a link to in the description. One of the negatives of its predecessor the JBL 5.1 was that when you unplugged the rear units there was a gaping hole in the sides of the bar which was disappointing to look at. A great addition to this soundbar is the included magnetic covers for the main unit and rear speakers. It just feels like JBL thought about the design a lot more and has taken feedback from previous versions which is great to see. Note, when using the covers on the smaller speakers, they've left a gap so you can still plug in a USB cable. If someone from JBL gets to see this video, can you please stop giving us power cables from every country in the world? Each unit comes with about 8 cords and only 2 of them get used. The remote allows for basic control over the soundbar volume as well as turning the unit on and off. There's 3 buttons to change between TV, Bluetooth and HDMI in. You also get the adjustability of height speakers for Atmos and DTSX. These are in 3 steps of low, medium and high. A bass level between 1 and 5 as well as rear speaker volume from muted through low, medium and high. This bar is suited for those that like an easy plug and play system. You don't get much in the way of adjustability, but for some people they like the simplicity. If you're one that likes to fine tune things, then this soundbar will probably annoy you and I'd suggest you look elsewhere. Voices through this soundbar are pretty clear, but it's a shame that JBL doesn't allow for any voice modes or the ability to change the centre channel level. I'd prefer to have the centre channel turned up a little, and especially for those that are hard of hearing, you may want to turn it up quite a lot. But with this soundbar, it just doesn't give you that flexibility. What I ended up doing was turning the bass down and bringing the overall level of the soundbar up. This was a bit of a workaround to achieve a better balance. You can get it most of the way compared to other systems, but still it's not as good as having a dedicated voice mode. The bass for movies was impressive. It gets really deep and shakes things a lot more than other systems I've tried, which I think is the benefit of having a large downward firing sub. One of my favourite movies to watch while testing the soundbar was Alita Battle Angel. The soundbar did a great job of pinpointing sounds in the fight scenes and getting you involved within the action. Atmos and DTSX are available when using a newer TV with an eARC port or plugging an Atmos enabled streaming box directly into the HDMI in port. The height speakers are convincing and I could easily tell where objects are meant to be placed. The rear speakers are fairly powerful, but if you need to put them far away from your seating position, then they may struggle. Music was enjoyable to listen to. 
Now it's not the most detailed soundbar, but it can really pack a punch and is a great system if you're wanting to get a party started, as it can get super loud. When changing between content, the bar will tell you via the front screen as to what audio format it's receiving. Earplay and Chromecast are both available, which means you get the best of both worlds. It also has Bluetooth compatibility, which I tend to use more as a backup if Airplay isn't suitable, like in a holiday house where you may not have a Wi-Fi connection. Alexa and Google Assistant are not supported due to the lack of a microphone, which is a shame, but not everyone uses these services. JBL doesn't have an app for the soundbar, and I definitely think that that's a cost-saving thing, as it's very expensive to develop a good app. This is one of the ways they've been able to keep it cheaper than other brands on the market. You can do an auto calibration which uses microphones on the bar, and to do this just hold down the HDMI button on the remote for 5 seconds. I didn't find it to make much of a difference in my room, but your mileage may vary. Now here's a few tips. To start with, when setting up AirPlay, you need to do this within the first couple minutes of turning the bar on for the first time, otherwise it'll change from AirPlay to broadcasting a standard Wi-Fi network. If you run out of time, the easiest way to resolve this is reset the soundbar, and to do that, just hold down the power and input button for a few seconds. Next tip, the rear speakers are designed to give you full music playback, so you can kind of use it as a little bit of a multi-room, so long as you're within range of the main bar. I used it to take it outside on the patio, and it worked actually really well. If you're going to do this, I'd suggest getting a couple of speaker stands, as you can get it higher off the ground, and it just gives you an easier way to move them around. I'll leave a link down below for the video I did on best rear speaker stands with soundbars. Try and elevate the rear speakers above ear height to get a better 3D sound. Play around with its position before committing to mounting them on the wall. Some people have had issues with their rear speakers cutting out. From the 30 or so that I've set up, there's probably been 2 or 3 that have presented with this issue, so the odds are small. I wouldn't not buy this soundbar based on the fear of that happening to you, as that's what a manufacturer's warranty is designed for. In my overall perception of JBL soundbars, they give you the best value for money, as they're cheaper than the likes of Samsung, or Sonos or LG, but they give you sound that is very comparable to those brands. There's a lot of living rooms that either don't have power points at the back, or are oddly shaped, which limits the type of rear speakers you can place. These fully wireless speakers give you the flexibility to put them wherever you want, but also run them off a power bank or wall socket. The subwoofer is super powerful and complements the soundbar nicely, and you get most of the main features of those other soundbars, minus Amazon and Google's voice assistants. With that, in the next couple of months, I'll be putting together a massive video comparing the best soundbars of 2021. What I'd like to know from you is which soundbar would you like to see. If you're keen to watch that video, then please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it. That's all from me. See you guys soon.